Hey guys, it's Casey. Uh, we're going to get to this video about mostly Hall of Famers who sucked their rookie years because I know people are going to freak out about these rookies and I want to get ahead of it. By the way, quick note, this is not in order. These are just 10, not the top 10. Like number one isn't number one. But first guys, today's video is sponsored by Odds Jam and I'm going to show you their website real quick. You are going to thank me and I decided to do this for two reasons. Number one is sports betting is becoming legal in more and more states. Um, and so I thought this would be useful to you guys. Number two, I am genuinely excited to show you guys this site. It is, and I know this sounds fake, it is literally free money. And if you've ever like dabbled in like the sports betting area, you'll see a bunch of like used car salesmen with slick backed hair telling you like they know who's gonna win the game. And it's all BS, right? Like you can feel it a mile away. This is not that. This is Odds Jam. This is their website developed by two guys that went to Stanford. Um, I'm talking like a mathematics and computer science degree, right? And these guys are not the used car salesmen. They use math to legally, legally get a edge over the sports book. So let's look at their tools. Here's one tool. Two, three, and four. Let's start with arbitrage. There are real complicated explanations. I'm gonna give you this simple explanation, okay? So let's say the Lakers were playing the Celtics. The Lakers at one sports book were offered at plus 110, and the Celtics at another sports book were offered at plus 110. Well, if you bet both of those, you'd be guaranteed to win $10 on that bet. But the problem is finding that discrepancy at different sports books. Well, Odds Jam automatically finds the discrepancies and shows you them in real time. So look at this one. Right now, the Rockets versus the Thunder, there is a discrepancy out there. 117 and 100 here at these various sports books, that is a almost 4% edge. And they have a calculator. So if I said I wanted to bet 100 here, I would need to bet 92 here, and I will guaranteed make almost $8 tonight. Now you can imagine how you could scale this up, right? Like let's say I had a lot of money, okay? Like let's say I had a lot of money out there. Let's say I almost had $2,000 that I was willing to bet. I would guaranteed make $80 tonight. Now imagine if I did that every single night, okay? Imagine if I had even more money to put down. Then this could be like the ultimate side hustle. It's free money. And Arbitrage shows you how to do it, dude. Like this is unbelievable. Like this is a game changer. And another thing, it's legal. It's not illegal. Like you would think like, wait a second, that seems free money. No, dude, this is not a scam. This is real. We've got positive EV. I love this one. So check this one out. Uh, let's, let's look at basketball. Uh, again, the Rockets and the Thunder, okay? The books are having a hard time figuring this one out. So Jalen Green's points, okay? This Pinnacle Sportsbook is known to be the sharpest in the business. Okay? They, they usually set the lines and then all the other sportsbooks follow them. That's how smart they are. Odds Jam is saying, uh, yeah, go to one of these three sportsbooks and put an over bet on Jalen Green's uh, points tonight. Okay, So they will show you the discrepancies. The sharp books against the square books. And you can take advantage of the square books. A lot of you, it's, it's uh, becoming something that more and more people are doing is placing a little money on sports. And I figure, hey, basketball season's starting. Why not we get the edge this season? So Odds Jam, go to their website. I'll put a link down below. They have a free seven day trial. They have three free arbitrage bets. They'll just send your inbox. Like even if you aren't sure this is for you, you can just sign up if you go to oddsjam.com. Sign up for their email. Multiple ways to test it out for free. But guys, that's oddsjam.com. Thanks so much to those guys for sponsoring today's video. You guys should know by now that I don't think we should be judged by our worst moments. I mean, I've made some pretty stupid predictions on this channel, and I paid dearly. I wonder what this year's playoff prediction bet will be. But I think people deserve a second chance because literally everyone makes mistakes. I mean, you guys are giving me a second chance by watching this video after I predicted that Trey Young sucks, and I appreciate that. But... I guarantee some NBA rookies this year are going to be called a bust after one season. And that is total BS. We need to stop it before it happens. So these are the top 10 all-stars who actually sucked their rookie year. 
Number 10 is Tracy McGrady. Dude was a seven point per game guy his rookie season. Up to 27 a game by year four. That's a leap. A good example of how times have changed. I mean, back in the day, top 10 picks just didn't play a lot of minutes. I don't think that T-Mac was that bad his rookie year. It's just he didn't get time on the court. Now, these rookies are like thrown to the wolves. They play a lot of minutes on bad teams. So it looks really, really bad. T-Mac was the ninth pick and played under 20 minutes a game for the last place Raptors. I mean, their last place, why wouldn't they want him to develop, right? I like the way things are now with rookies playing a lot, but I don't like how it makes us all call them a bust way too early. Mostly, they are like Tracy McGrady. Or number nine, Kobe Bryant. Also about seven a game, under 20 minutes, but Bean was a terrible shooter. 41% from the field. That continued into the playoffs when he airballed four times times in five minutes. Obviously, we all know what the Mamba turned into, so never call anyone a bust, no matter how embarrassing their worst moment looks as a rookie. Number eight, Chauncey Billups. The number three overall pick in 1997 was so bad as a rookie, he was traded before the season was over. 37% from the field, under four assists a game. People doubted this dude for years. Chauncey was on four teams in just six years. Then finally, he became Mr. Big Shot with a Hall of Fame career. The real problem in his case was Rick Pitino, a disaster as the Celtics coach. He came over from college where he was the man and he got impatient with Chauncey taking a while to develop. And that really screwed the C's out of a Hall of Famer. Number seven, Scottie Pippen. He wasn't even the best rookie on the Bulls in 1988. That was Horace Grant. Pip had about eight points a game with under four boards, but he was an all-star by year three. He actually says a back injury changed everything for him in year one. He said, quote, probably the best thing to happen to me was that I hurt my back after my first year in the league because it really put me in a position to focus on the physical aspect of how to survive in this game. And we all know how Pippen played super hard in his career, but learning how tough the league actually is early shaped his style. Number six is Kawhi Leonard, a total afterthought coming out of San Diego State. The 15th pick became the finals MVP two years after his rookie season. That's like Corey Kispert being finals MVP in 2024, or Cole Anthony in 2023, or Siku Demboya being finals MVP this year. Do you know how insane that is? Kawhi was at like eight points a year his first season, about one assist, made under two threes. Now he's at like 25 points a game, over five assists, and about five threes. Number five, Steve Nash. The blueprint for Steph Curry himself changed teams twice before winning his first MVP. He was actually drafted by the Suns, who gave up on him after two seasons. The Mavericks liked Nash and dealt free role players and a first to get him in 1999. Well, that first became the Matrix, Sean Marion, who was great in Phoenix, but giving up on a two-time MVP is insane. Players like Steve Nash are given up usually because of their size and, you know, probably their whiteness but they end up being pretty badass sometimes. Number four, Jimmy Butler. Maybe the worst rookie on this list. Dude averaged like two points a game because he barely got on the court. Literally no one except his mom thought he'd become an all-star and a $100 million player. Jimmy was homeless at 13 years old, but he never stopped betting on himself. He went from a junior college to Marquette to the last first round pick. The reason that he climbed to the top was what we still see today, a gigantic change chip on his shoulder. The confidence that Jimmy has is the exact opposite of a guy like Ben Simmons, who's been hyped his whole life. Point is, you never know what a two point per game rookie can eventually be. Number three, Brandon Ingram. This one is really bad because B.I. doesn't have the excuse of barely seeing minutes. He was almost 30 minutes a game with under 10 points, four boards, and 40% from the field. What is worse is he was the number two pick as a Laker. So the spotlight was real bright and it was easy to call him a bust. 
But this is a great example of not judging a guy too fast. Ingram was actually only 18 years old as a rookie. The second youngest guy drafted in 2016. LA tried to beef him up by putting him on a weight gain plan, but they benched him before the season even started. He ended up as the best player in the Anthony Davis trade for New Orleans. He was an all-star and most improved in 2020. Number two, Dirk Nowitzki. They actually called him Irk Nowitzki because of his lack of D. That actually didn't change much, but the Hall of Famer ended up as one of the best offensive players ever. As a rookie though, he scored just eight points a night on 40% from the field. That's crazy because he developed one of the most unstoppable shots ever. This is like a shooter as bad as DJ Wilson becoming Kevin Durant. DJ to KD, that is what Dirk did. Mavs fans booed him on draft night. He was so frustrated, Dirk thought about going back to Germany. Sometimes it's age, sometimes it's being in a new environment, but never judge a guy that quick. Number one, Ray John Rondo. Dude was terrible his rookie year, which is why it's so impressive that Terrence Mann actually had his rookie card. Who keeps some random guy's rookie card? Rondo played behind Sebastian Telfair as a rook, which is embarrassing. He averaged about six points, four assists, and 42% from the field. The thing that probably saved him was Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen joining Boston. Rondo learned how to be a pro and obviously won a title as a role player in 2008. Now, he's one of those vets that bounces around to a team that needs a leader and a steady point guard. I think that Rondo will actually be a Hall of Famer. He's been an all-star four times, has won two titles, and will have at least a 16-year NBA career. So, guys that we should not judge after just one season now are James Wiseman, Onyeka Okongwu, Killian Hayes, and especially Jalen Smith on the Suns, who was a rare top 10 pick and ended up barely playing for an NBA Finals team. This season, I know there will be a lot of players who start the year slow, but we need to slow down because anything can happen.